So what inspired this design was me looking up different architectural shapes and designs, origami arts, um, different gowns that had uniqueness to it, you know, very fashion forward and daring. And here are some pictures from Pinterest to kind of give you an idea of what I was looking at to give me inspiration for this design. So let's get started. So for the components, we have a brownish copper colored fabric with gold undertones. This fabric is stiff and noisy. It's a one-way stretch and a one-way non-stretch. I'm gonna be working with the non-stretch direction of this fabric. So as you can see here. I also have this beautiful Indian type garment that I'm going to take the trim off of and use it for this project. See, it has a lining in the back. I thought this trim was very beautiful. I didn't like the pink color so much, so I'm going to get creative and take the bottom portion of this garment apart and I'm going to be using a brown invisible zipper. This is what it looks like. I have a dark brown thread and dark tan and I bought it at the fabric store for like 75 cents. Onto the draping phase, I'm going to be cutting out four pieces of muslin for this draping process. I did some tugging and tearing because I want to make sure that the grains are straight. Now I'm marking my one inch line on each muslin piece. And that's for a temporary seam allowance while draping. Also, you want to make sure that you press your pieces after or before you put in your one inch seam allowance so that you can get more accuracy. So here's my half scale dress form which I plan on replacing soon because as you can see it's not that good of a quality but hey I'm going to work with what I got for right now. And I had to literally draw in the side seams and the princess seams because <laughs> this dress form did not come with it. So now I'm starting to drape the front portion of the bottom of this dress and taking one block of muslin that I cut out, I am pinning it onto the dress form and following the seams, starting from the waist and I'm gonna be going all the way down. You wanna mark as accurately as possible. I'm going to be giving it a dip which will widen the bottom of the gown. Now I'm going to go onto the side seam. And repeating the process again. Now, if you have side seams on your dress form, you just want to feel out for it. Me, I just had to eye it because there's no type of indication where I can feel for the side seams. So I'm just doing the best that I can and drawing in my lines. Now I'm going to cut off the excess fabric, start again for the back portion. So now we're going to create this asymmetrical neckline on the dress form. So using this draping tape, I'm going to create the shape that I'm going for, for this neckline. So on one side, I wanted to create this strapless princess seam neckline. And it may take you a couple of times to kind of get the shape right because Obviously, tape is not flexible, really, um, and you're going to have to try to adjust it, which is what I'm doing now, so I can get the shape right. 
so as you can see I'm kind of struggling here and then I finally kind of got it right so now on to the other side which is going to be a deep V but will have a strap so it'll go all the way toward the back and I just love this type of design where one side is different from the other and that's what I was going for when thinking this uh, sketch out so this is how it looks in the back the side and the front okay so now I'm gonna take a big piece of muslin and I've drawn a line right down the middle so that I know where to place it on the dress form and I'm going to be placing pins just to stabilize it and I'm gonna make sure that it's straight so I don't run into any issues during this process Now I'm going to trace in the neckline using pencil and I'm just going to kind of follow where I placed the draping tape. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can use a pen, pencil, whatever you prefer. I just use a pencil all the way up to the shoulder and I'm going to do the side seam as well now as you can see the darts coming in uh, subtly as I have pinned and draped everything um, I can now start to see the darts at the front and I'm just gonna cut off excess fabric and start creating the darts And I'm just gonna pin them so using my pins I'm just going to pin the dart not so close to the dress form I'm gonna give it a little wiggle room um, but I do want to make sure that the darts are pretty close to the body now I'm going to start to mark it down and this is just a rough markdown I'm going to perfect it once I take it off the dress form okay so you want to release some of that tension that pulling that you see there I'm going to cut through being careful not to cut through the waistline I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing for the back I don't think there'll be any darts for the back so I'm just draping and cutting away So now I'm taking the whole thing off so that I can transfer it to paper. Using my French curve ruler and my regular ruler, I'm going to just perfect the lines and also add in the seam allowance to each panel of this gown. So I'm using this pen marker and I'm just following where I did the markings and all of my seam allowances for this project is half inch for the seams so for the bottom of the gown I'm gonna do one inch I haven't figured out what 
finish I'm gonna do for the bottom so I'm just giving myself that much uh, allowance just in case so with my French curve I'm just drawing in that shape of the hips and the line in red is where the dip is located and that's how wide I want the dress to be or how flared out I want it to be and while draping you can decide whether you want it to be you know not that flared out or extremely flared out it's all up to you so this is going to take me a little while because there is multiple pieces and yeah so i have two pieces already done which is the front portion of the gown and what i'm going to start doing is pinning so that i can try it on the dress form so this also is going to take some time i'm going to be putting a lot of pins so that everything can be in place Okay, so here's all of the pieces. Now I'm gonna connect and pin, and this would be the side that I'm pinning. So I have both front and back panels, and I'm just gonna put them together so that I can see any imperfections, anything that I need to correct. Now I'm gonna go to the top portion of this gown. Now this is gonna be more difficult but I'm gonna try as best as I can to have my vision <laughs> come alive because this is an asymmetrical top so it can be a bit challenging So this portion of the video is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you want to fast forward, you can, but I always like to show the process of the whole making of a gown, so, or at least try to, because it's such a process, but I try my best to kind of incorporate bits and pieces of how it's done. So those are my darts that I'm drawing in now and again I'm gonna put in my seam allowance all around this piece. Now I'm going to pin my darts and I'm lining up the markings I'm gonna place pins after placing the pieces onto the dress form I made my little corrections and I'm going to be taking it to pattern paper So I'm going to roll out this pattern paper and I'm going to make sure that it's all flat. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see that there are, there can be numbers or little dots on the paper just to give me more accuracy on where I'm placing the pattern pieces. So I'm going to unpin everything 
and I have my little tools, I have my scissors, my ruler, and my pattern wheel. And this wheel will basically put little holes in the paper and it'll direct me on where to draw in the shape of this top. So I really love this little tool um, and it's very inexpensive. You can find it at any sewing notion store or online. And um, as you can see, I'm able to accurately draw in the pattern because I can see the little holes that the wheel has made on the paper. So you always want to use your ruler just to help guide you. So I wrote down two X's because that's going to tell me the highest point of the dart. And so I'm going to just trace that in. And those two half circles that I drew in will just let me know where the darts is located. And you don't have to do that. I just like having little reminders on my work. So it's totally up to you. So going down on this deep V is kind of challenging because I can't really go all the way down. Now I'm marking what top this is writing down any useful information now I'm unpinning this whole thing and I'm going to create a paper pattern with these muslin blocks just cutting off any excess fabric before making my final pattern Next time I'm going to make a separate video on just pattern making on whatever project that I'm doing at that time so that I can get more in detail and it's not so rushed all in one video. Always make sure that you're writing any information on that particular pattern block that you're working on so that you can know what is what and not get confused. And I'm gonna create a facing for the top. So I'm just kind of going around and creating a shape based off of the top portion of the gown. And this is the type of finishing that I want for the top. And I'm not too experienced with facings, but hey, I hope it works. So I have the fabric placed on the table with some tape because since I have such a big yardage, I don't want the fabric to be sliding down and falling off the table. So to stabilize it, I put some tape. So now I'm putting my pattern piece on the fabric and I like to place pins just to lay it flat as I cut. So that's what I'm doing now. Just placing a couple pins. You could also have some weights and place it on top of the pattern paper. But you really want to make sure that the pattern piece is flat so that you can get an accurate cut. So using my scissors, these are some nice scissors from Amazon and they're very heavy duty and sharp. So I love these. I'm going to be using them to cut out every pattern piece. Try to use sharp scissors and not dull ones because it's really gonna mess up the fabric you're not gonna get an accurate cut and you know make sure that your scissors are nice and sharp I'm also gonna trace in the darts since I can't really cut 
that area so hopefully the little holes will show up on the fabric itself so that I can know where the darts are so these are the pieces for the back and also my facing for the front portion of the top of the gown so I'm just gonna do that real quick onto the skirt portion so I'm just repeating the whole process just cutting it out So using my heavy duty singer sewing machine, I'm going to sew everything together and it shouldn't take me a long time because I worked with a half scale dress form so it's a much smaller piece of work. So putting the pieces right sides facing each other and like I said, I'm going to leave a split on one of the sides of this gown so one side is going to be slightly open so here's the facing and I'm gonna start placing this piece onto the top portion of the gown or the bodice rather and just gonna be extra careful of where I'm gonna place it and just be mindful of how deep the V is as you can see there so I'm just gonna mark that with a piece of chalk as an indication after I finish sewing the facing to the bodice I am now just cutting little triangles to release some tension I flipped over the facing and this is how it's looking now and what I'm gonna do is just attach the straps together by hand sewing and this is how it's looking so it's looking pretty good and I'm continuing with the bottom portion I'm just pinning because there are multiple panels so it did take me some time but we're getting there so here's how it's looking now now I'm going to attach the top portion and the bottom portion of this gown together and I have it pinned up so there's a fan design around the neckline so now I'm going to be creating that using a scrap piece of fabric and I cut a square and I'm just gonna create pleats and press them so here we go what I'm doing is for every fold I'm going to iron it so that it can be pressed down and stay flat and this took a while because I did multiple pleats but it came out really nice and crisp so as I ironed it and it's really hot so <laughs> that's why you see my hand just jumping up because it was extremely hot but you want to get it really hot so that the creases can be really sharp for the pleatings and as I iron, I just put some pressure to it so that it can really, really be flat. And this is what I mean when I say crisp, sharp pleats folds and this is by just pressing down on the fabric while ironing 
I'm detaching the trimming off of this skirt by using a seam ripper. I'm just carefully detaching. And now I'm going to detach the trimming from the trimming. <laughs> so it's like three trim in one. So I'm going to use this portion that I'm removing. And I noticed I had some nice copper tones to it, so it'll be perfect for the gown. So I'm just cutting the excess lining off, but still keeping a little bit for the back of this piece that I'm using. These are the beautiful pleats that I've created with the iron. It looks so nice and crisp and neat. So now I'm going to figure out how I'm going to attach this to the dress. So I'm trying out different looks and with the trimming, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this. Clean up this trimming a bit before I place it on the waistline of this gown. And by using a thread and needle, I just sewed the belt onto the gown by hand. And I did that all around, top to bottom. And I also hand sewed the fan as well. So this is the back and I placed the dress form on the table so that I can have a better angle and for comfortability when I hand sew this. And I also hand sew the bottom of the gown with the invisible type stitching. So you can barely see the stitches. I'm not a fan of horse hair so I didn't go that route. I just folded it one inch and sewed around. This is the bottom all the way to the top. I'm happy with how the gown came out. You can see the slit on the side. I think the fan feature is beautiful. 